Hello and welcome to Church of Celebration Online. Happy 14th birthday, COC. Today at 12.30 p.m. is Meet the Pastors Online. If you're newer to COC, we would love to have you join us. Text COCMTP to 555-888 and we'll text you all the details. Next weekend is Revive KO'd, a special service led by our junior high and high school ministries. Log on at the times listed to worship along. Just a reminder that you can give online at any time and also follow us on social media to keep yourself in the loop. Hey COC, welcome to worship online. Let's go ahead and stand up and let's lift the name of Jesus today. Come on, sing it out. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance I believe that you are my fortress You are my portion You are my hiding place Oh, I believe you are the way And the truth And the life I believe We're going to sing it. Come on, we're going to sing it out today. It's a new horizon. Hey! 
and it's a new horizon and I'm set on you and you meet me here today with mercies that are new all my fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long when I'm here with you and it's a new horizon and I'm set on Let's give a celebration yes. today. Yes. Amen. God is so good. We're going to continue to worship today because his love goes on and on and on. Come on, celebrators. Say amen in those comments down below. Come on, sing it out. Hey. Come on. To the sky, eyes fixed on the one who knows no end. Stand strong for all of time in the joy and in the trial. You are the beginning and the end. Your
Amen. We're going to sing this song again like we did last week. It's called The Blessing. I pray that as we sing this song today that you will feel God's presence in your lives. That all you can do is just surrender and worship. Lifting up your hands in complete surrender. Let's sing it out today. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing Amen. 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 Sing that again. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing on me.
you are before us and beside us and all around us. What a blessing to be in your house. It may be a home. It may be a car. It may be somewhere else that we're worshiping through this service. But we are in your house and we are worshiping you. God, we do pray blessings upon our children and their children and their children for all generations. Jesus, we worship you. We love you so much. And we give this all to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. It is so good to be here with you today. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. I'm so thankful for our band, for Kevin and our team, as well as the staff here at Shiloh as they've been recording our services. We, we could not do what it is that we feel like we're called to do here at the Church of Celebration without Shiloh's help. And just a big shout out and thank you to them. Uh, please pray for their church as you're praying for ours is we're in some funky, weird times right now, aren't we, church? I mean, it's like PJ church. And what I mean by that is people are in their pajamas. It's not just Pastor Josh, it's pajamas. We got dudes standing in their kitchen trying to rush coffee to the living room right now. No shirt, no shoes, no problem, right? And we got kids in their undies right now in their living rooms. It's crazy. What is going on in the church today, man? But uh, no, we, we are so thankful for you. And in all, all reality, uh, we, we miss you. We miss seeing your faces. We miss the face-to-face and uh, handshake um, interaction with you. But man, it's been amazing what God has allowed us to do in this time and in this season. And, and the crazy thing for us right now is just realizing that, you know, uh, a lot of people are really in the middle of it. Uh, there's been difficulty and and, and, and it's not just you. You have to know it's, it's your neighbors and it's your friends and it's the people around you right now and the people around us that are really, really struggling right now. And so obviously be in prayer for each other, but you have to know that we are so, so hopeful as people for the comeback. Uh, we believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that no matter what you've been dealing with, uh, you know, for some of you before this whole COVID craziness took over the world, uh, maybe it was, it was a job issue or a relationship issue Maybe you were struggling in your marriage. You and your spouse were having difficulties leading up to this. 
It might have been in your parenting or a vocational issue with your job, maybe you're really struggling as to whether or not you felt like, you know, has God called me to this and am I supposed to continue to do this and I feel like I'm wasting my time or my life or my, uh, my abilities and, and we really know that, you know, God, God doesn't waste any opportunity like this and, and, and I think a lot of us really asking kind of the question, why, you know, why is it that we're all dealing with the things that we're dealing with right now and the reality is God doesn't waste any opportunity. There's no accidents, man, only on purposes. Look at somebody in your, in your living room right now and say, you are an on purpose. Turn to somebody right now and say that you are an on purpose because you are. And man, we really feel like now in, in this time and in this season at our church in Maricopa and this state and around the world, we're ready for a comeback, but it's got to be the right kind of comeback. You know, a lot of us have been looking at the COVID situation around the world. And if you've been watching the news, you can see the world, it just seems like it's falling apart at the seams. And, and the reality is things are a little bit crazy, but you know, what's amazing about this particular situation is with God, man, this, this is the perfect setup. It feels like a setback. Everybody's freaking out, but this is, this is a, a setup, not just a setback. It's a setup for an amazing comeback. And we're not just talking about something that's like an economic thing, because for a lot of you and a lot of people around the world, a lot of our neighbors, a lot of our friends and people at work that we're listening to on Facebook, it's an economic thing that people are really excited about. And, 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 and for the Lord, it's not just about that. It's not just an educational comeback. It's not a vocational comeback that God gets excited about. It's not a relational comeback necessarily that God gets excited about. It's a kingdom comeback, that's what God's excited about right now. And some of the most profound comebacks that have ever happened historically when it comes to God's kingdom have, have been right in the middle of an uncertain time like this. So here, here's really our prayer today. I want to pray that as we look at a particular example from the book of Acts, of that very first church where it looked like they were up against a major setback. We're going to realize together and be exposed to this really awesome reality that it wasn't a setback. It was actually a set up for this amazing comeback. So would you pray with me as we crack open the book of Acts? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for uh, our church. Thank you for the individuals that are in their living rooms right now. We've got some that might be in an office space or even they might be in their car watching on their phones. But whatever it is, Lord, I'm praying that God, you would give us ears to hear and you would give us eyes to see. God, that you would move in our hearts. There's a lot that we can do and there's a lot the world can do and there's a lot that we feel like the government should do or different leaders should do, but only you can make the wind blow. And so we're gonna lean on you by faith right now. God, would you stir us up and would you set us loose? God of the most amazing comeback of history. In Jesus' name, we all prayed. Tap somebody on the shoulder and say, amen, amen. As uh, you go ahead and turn your Bibles to Acts chapter two, and what we wanna do is we wanna pick up with the church uh, uh, as, as they got um, in this really amazing situation. It's called Pentecost. If you know anything about the book of Acts, uh, the author, his name was Luke, and he was a doctor very meticulous about making sure that he had all of his information correct. He wrote the Gospel of Luke, which is kind of the third installment of the four Gospels. Luke was, as I said, he was a physician and he was meticulous. He wrote uh, his perspective of the life, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus from more of the Greek perspective as opposed to uh, maybe the Roman or the Jewish perspective or kind of the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the common man of the day, which John the gospel is written to. This is written specifically to those who are Greek. And, and here, Luke, he picks up and actually not only does he uh, represent the life of Jesus, but he's going to talk specifically about and represent the historical account of the first church. And here's where we're going to kick off. It's Acts chapter two. You'll find it in your Bibles. You'll probably see it on your screens here. We're going to start in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And this is what it says. It says, when the day of Pentecost arrived. Now, now stop there really quick just to give you a little bit of context. Pentecost was a really, really important time in the Jewish 
calendar. It was called the Feast of Weeks. And uh, what it represented was a festival called Shabbat. And it was when it was supposed to represent when Moses was given the Ten Commandments, literally 50 days after the Exodus. And so people were coming from all over the world, people uh, who were um, uh, Jewish by birth and by faith, but also those who had been one to the Jewish faith from outside of there. And they were all converging on Jerusalem during this time. And we're going to find ourselves, well, this is actually 10 days after Jesus ascended. He's left the disciples. He's told them what to do. He told them to come to this particular place. And so that's where we find them, where he says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Now, the question is, what are they doing there? Well, if you go back a chapter in Acts chapter one, Jesus actually told them, look, don't leave Jerusalem. But what I want you to do is I'm going to send you a helper. Uh, He's called the Holy Spirit. And he's going to come upon you. It's going to come in a very short amount of time. So stay in Jerusalem and wait for that moment to happen. So Acts chapter 1, the disciples do what Jesus told them to do. They find themselves here in Acts chapter 2 during this festival of Shabbat. They're there at Pentecost. They're in this uh, meeting place. And they're there and they're anticipating God to do something really, really big. And then verse 2. He said, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Now, if you can imagine this, uh, I saw the movie Twister in the original Cine Capri at 24th Street in Camelback. Uh, The disciples are there. They've been called to to come to that room and and to pray, and so they're having this epic church service. Uh, 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 They're having the quiet time of their lives together, and then all of a sudden they hear like this crazy wind filling up the space that they're in. And you know, if if it were happening here in Maricopa, and this was a a Sunday morning service at COC, some of us might be thinking, "Oh, it's actually just the jets flying over, right?" Or, or if you live in uh, Sunita or Desert Cedars, or maybe over there in Maricopa Meadows, what's up, Meadows? You might think the train is going by, but they, they hear this sound, but it's, it's something so profound and so overwhelming that it literally fills the entire room like that, like that scene in that movie Twister, just so filling up this awesome setting. And, 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 and the amazement doesn't stop there. It goes into verse three, and, it, and this is where it just gets spooky. It says, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them, and it rested on each one of them spooky. And then verse four, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I had to look at the commentary for this because uh, I've kind of seen this from a different perspective for a long time. And it might have been from a picture that I saw where there's kind of this idea of cloven tongues that was upon everybody. But commentary says that the original Greek gives the picture not of a cloven tongue on each, but listen to this. The fire-like appearance presented itself at first as if it were a single body. This is crazy. And then suddenly parted in this direction and that so that a portion of it rested on each of those present. And so there was this embodiment uh, God, the Holy Spirit in the room. And, and as they saw this and they heard this, they were filled with just this, this uh, 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 emotion of anticipation. And then it kind of diversified itself. I don't know if you guys ever saw the um, Michael Keaton movie, Multiplicity, right? Uh, this was literally God, the Holy Spirit, kind of breaking up into individual pieces and components and coming upon uh, each and every one of those people that were in the upper room. And it gave them this amazing ability Ability to speak languages different from their own as God led them to speak. And now to the crowd outside, they could hear this thing happening up there in the upper room. I, and who knows what this was like, right? It might have been like Shiloh or COC on a Sunday when the neighborhood is like, man, what is going on in church right now? They've got like tone low bumping it up. Man, call the cops on those people. It is loud, right? They hear this from the outside. Uh, it's, it's like Dolby came to the first century and just kind of overwhelmed this place. But on the inside, the disciples, the people of God that did what he said, they came to the upper room and they waited upon him, having just this epic experience of God. It says that he went from being, listen to this, 
uh, from being with them, and this is really the key, to in them. You see, for the first time in history, God took up residence in his people, in you. In your, in your kids, if they came to know Jesus, if they have professed that Jesus Christ is Lord at that moment where you in humi humility realized that you had a desperate need for God, that there was one way to be saved in this life and in the next, and it was by what Jesus did on the cross for you. At that very moment that you realized your need, God had been calling you and drawing you to Jesus your whole life. Before you were born, he was dreaming of having this relationship with you. But at the moment that you asked him to be your savior, he took up residence in you. You literally became the temple, listen to this, of God. And he began to do a profound work inside of you. And he was, he was doing that in them. God moved in. That's just that's just awesome. Verse five. This is this is kind of what was happening outside. It says, "Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at the sound the multitude came together, and they were listen to this bewildered, because each of them was hearing them speak in his own language." I, I kind of liken this to what it would be like when, when, uh, when we get to go to heaven. Um, there will be no different languages. Uh, the, the issue of the, the things that separate us, they won't separate us anymore. Uh, one of the things that we talk about at Church of Celebration as they do, I know a lot of our great sister churches is, uh, with our greeter team, is that, look, you are repping heaven. When you stand out in front of our church, we're trying to represent that we are the happiest place on earth. It's not Disneyland, right? Disneyland, they're, they're, they're walking around with crutches right now trying to figure out what to do. The church, and here we are, we're online, right? We are, we are alive, and, and we are now indwelt by the Spirit of God, and we are literally called to represent heaven. And, and here's the cool thing is that God literally came in the way in which each person would understand in their own language, and he welcomed people. And that's, that's really what's happening in this picture here is that people went out after this sound and they were speaking and uh, communicating in their own language and people were bewildered by this. Uh, it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys remember the whole idea of the flash mob. Was it like 2010, 2011, 2012? Uh, I was actually looking at my message for this last week, and, and I saw this video of a group in Mall of America. It was one of the coolest things you've ever seen. So if you haven't looked it up, look up Mall of America Christmas Time Flash Mob, and you should be able to find it. But it's the idea that uh, there, there are thousands of people that are completely unsuspecting that something is about to take place, right? But there's a group of people who intentionally have been kind of, uh, uh, they've been available and ready uh, to be used in such a profound way that it's literally, regardless of what you think about Christmas or you know whatever it is that these people are doing to be disruptive, they can't help but be put in awe of what is about to take place. And you know, kind of, you've seen the you've seen the video, some of you, but it's like there, there's this lady, and you know, she's not one of those like uh, highlight reels from American Idol where she can't sing. I mean, she can sing, right? She's like she's like Kelsey up here, right? Or a Misty or a Shelly, like she can sing. And she just starts belting it. And, and everybody at first is like, what is that lady doing? But they can't help but listen because she just, she sounds amazing, right? But then it kind of pans and you can see it's not just her, but then the uh, harmony parts come in and, and they start singing. And, and all of a sudden people go from kind of like, what is going on to, okay, what is happening here? And, and as the crowd is kind of disrupted and they're hearing this, all of a sudden you see these four guys going up the escalator in the background on the video and they start singing and, and, and all of a sudden like half the crowd, they're like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So some people start applauding, right? And then, and then the flash mob, it gets even bigger. Like you hear voices like all over from every angle. And then they got a guy on the balcony and he's just belting out like, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. He's singing this, this amazing song in worship of God and everybody in the place that they don't just sit and watch. They actually start engaging and singing. And it's this beautiful picture of what Pentecost was when the people of God, they're they're, they're available and they're waiting for the Lord. 
and, and, and God speaks to them in a profound way and he indwells them and, then, and, the, and they go out and they begin to communicate with people who've yet to know and hear that life transformational message. And it's, it's like this immutable but beautiful thing. It's, it's, it's like heaven coming down. They, they prayed heaven down and now they're going to act heaven down. And it says here in verse seven, check this out. This is their response. They were amazed and they were astonished. Then it says they were saying, wait a minute, aren't these people speaking Galileans? To which some of you were like, well, why would it say that in there? It would be, it would be kind of like if, if Maricopans went up to Scottsdale, it'd be like the Scottsdale crowd, right? Snotsdale, like they would be up there and they'd be looking, they were like, aren't these people from Maricopa? Like, what, what is Maricopa doing up here? Like, who are these people? To which some of you were like, well, wait a second. How, how did they know they were Galileans? It's, it, they just look like Galileans. And just Maricopans, look, people recognize you. You just look a certain way. We're awesome. They, the world just don't know this yet, right? But they're looking in there like, what on earth? Who are these people? Aren't they just Galileans? And, and it's such a profound part of this context here in, in Acts 2 because isn't it amazing that God calls the most unlikely people? And I'm just thinking of all of the different people that are in our church. I'm thinking about my own story where I'm the most unlikely person. I never got a high school education. I, I I had uh, six credits at the end of my junior year and dropped out. And I, I didn't actually start college until my early 20s because I spent the, the first half of adulthood basically doing uh, everything I could do to run the opposite direction of anything that God would have any part of, at least in my mind, not knowing that God was chasing me down every moment, right? And he was doing that with you. And it's amazing to me, knowing so many different stories in our in our church, the the people that you saw up here on stage in the band. I'm thinking about the individual lives and their families, the the miraculous things that God has done through some of us that others would just think we were ordinary, and that was the very people that Jesus entrusted the first church with, like. The first shot, you know, this is like the flagship. Like, the, the, I, I'm going to use this group of people to, to launch a message that will affect everybody on earth for all time, forever. I'm going to use this ragtag group of people. And it, it just blows me away that God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Amen? He does. He just does. And this blew them away so much. This is verse eight. He goes on and he says, and how is it that we hear each of us in their own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. And this is the key. Listen to this. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. See, what some people may have thought of in this situation, Jesus was just crucified, right? The audience here, they heard about Jesus, but this is 50 days later. Like, imagine what's happened in the last 50 days. What are we still in March? Like, March 572 days? Like, where are we at right now? This is 50 days later. Everybody out here, outside of the upper room, they've all moved on. They, hardly any of them have even heard of Jesus. They're from some completely different place, right? They, they don't know about these things. And yet these people, the people of God, the very first thing that they did, Look, when they came down, this is their setup, is the upper room. And this, this is their comeback moment, people. They, when God told them, hey, I want you to wait for me, go into the upper room. A lot of these people, they gave up careers. Uh, they left their families for a time. They sacrificed their money. And they, they literally camped out in Jerusalem. And they prayed together. And they waited upon the Lord. And it was in this moment, it was in this 
this uh, moment of devotion and obedience to the Lord that God was preparing them. And he wasn't preparing them for some economic comeback or vocational comeback or relational comeback. He was preparing them for a kingdom comeback. Because when God is dreaming about the earth, he's not, he's not dreaming that, man, I hope, the, I hope that the governments of the world can just get along and, and, and I'm, I'm really hoping that the economy can come back so everybody can live better. And God's not thinking about that. God, God's dream is that more people would hear the gospel. And so the very first thing the church does out of this epic quiet time, this church service that's rocking the community, they come down and they begin to share the mighty works of God with each and every individual that's down below there. And, and we'll wrap this passage up. This was the outcome, verse 12. And it says they all were amazed. Everybody say all. All were amazed and perplexed. Saying to one another, what does this mean? It's a really, really important question to be asking in our time with COVID, with what's happening around the world right now. What does this mean? Verse 13, but others mocked and said, they're filled with new wine. <laughs> Basically, they're just getting drunk. They, they've been tipping back grandpa's cough medicine, right? Uh, the, the, these guys are just drinking the Kool-Aid. That's all there is. And, and this is really... This is the reaction of the message of God from everybody out there. It's, it's going to be one of two things. Paul, Paul said this. He said that the, the gospel, it's either the aroma of life or it's the aroma of death. Some, they're going to hear the message of Christ. They're going to see somebody who's motivated uh, for, for the kingdom of God and, and, he's, and, and God is going to be moving in them and they're going to be communicating from that place. And some are going to hear, they're going to say, that's the Lord, praise God. And some, they're going to hear that and just go, ugh, I, I can't have anything to, I, I don't want anything to do with that. And it's going to be completely the opposite. But we're not in charge of the results. It's up to the Lord. Our calling is to be in a place available to hear from the Lord, to make ourselves completely open and available to what it is that God might be saying and doing in any given moment. And when he says to do something, that we just do it. We don't do it because we have to. We do it because, because we want to, because of what it means, because we're a part of the kingdom of God. We, we're daughters and sons of the Most High. There, there's no greater place to be. I mean, it was just, it was like 30 or 40 days ago, you guys, that uh, more people on earth heard the gospel message than any other time in history. That's undeniable. And it happened when everybody was on lockdown. Like we couldn't even have church services. Like everybody's doors were locked and we're sitting behind a uh, computer and TV and iPhone screens. Like, can we go out? Like, what do we do? And a lot of us have to be asking that question. You know, what, why, why is what's happening now happening? I, I love uh, Ed Stetzer. He said that we need to reset our Why? He said, we need to be asking, God, why is this happening in my life, in our life, and in my community, in our community around the world? Why is this happening right now? Why, why are you allowing this to happen? And I think it's so important because for us, we, we all want a recovery, man. We all want things to get better. We all want to come back, but... But, but there's only one comeback that matters, people. It's the comeback of the kingdom of God. You know, for some of us, our priorities, you know, the big thing for us has been, you know, maybe an economic thing, like financially, we're really hurting right now. And so that stimulus check, man, when the stimulus comes, like some of us are switching political parties right now because of the money that we might get, right, for the stimulus. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
some of us are dying relationally. We're like, you know, we've been forced to be with our family. And you know, maybe there's a reason for that, people. But some of us, it's, it's, it's been hard and it's made little problems worse, like things that, you know, were kind of under the surface. Now we're all forced to be together and it's made them more difficult. And, and you know, so for some of us are looking for some relational reprie- reprieve, some relational comeback. Some of us, you know, we, we lost our jobs. And, and look, these are hard times, man. They're hard. We got, we got people struggling with anxiety and levels that they never have. People that can't afford uh, just the basic necessities right now, and, and people that don't have a, a community or a network. You might be joining us for the first time at Church of Celebration. Some of you may have shared this Facebook watch party, and you just happen to be watching. And, and I want you to know right now, listen, it's not a mistake that you're here. God knew that you were going to come upon this link right here and right now, and this is the most important moment in your life. And look, if, if you can't feed your family right now, if you can't pay a bill, if you don't know where help is going to come from, let me just tell you, we, we as Christians have been called to be an answer to prayer at this time right now. Uh, you, you, can just, you might be here just for this reason. Text right now. Get on your iPhone uh, or, or whatever your phone is and text uh, the word CARE, C-A-R-E, to the number 555-888. Text that right now. CARE to 555-888 and and let us know whatever your needs are. Maybe it's just prayer. Maybe there's something, something that you need help with. We've been concerned with our, our uh, crowd that's been over 60 or our folks that are part of our church but or maybe just a part of our community. You could be in another state. We helped somebody from Tennessee two weeks ago, you guys, that never been to our church. But we've been concerned with our folks with underlying health issues or fears or concerns. A lot of our people, we've, we've had people in Maricopa, some people from our church that have that have had uh, COVID, and it's been a really difficult time for them. Uh, If you need help, we want to help you. And the best way to find it, man, is is text the number 555-888, the word care, and we will help you right now. But but what God really wants to do is is he's getting us to that place where he wants us to be asking, why is this happening? He wants this to happen because this is not a setback, you guys. This is a set up for the comeback of the kingdom of God, the greatest comeback of history. It's happening right now. The question is, are we ready for this? Are we ready to be the people that God has created and designed and been been encouraging us to be in this time so that we can go out, so we can leave that room where we've been preparing spiritually, where God has been pouring into us, and he's so excited for us. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. And it's only by his amazing grace that he's, he can do this, that he can use broken sinful people to do and be a part of miraculous things, things that have never taken place in any other time in human history. And he's going to use you to do it if you're willing. And when I say that, you know, God is an equal opportunity. God, he's, he's not sitting here going, uh, you know, I'll use anybody over 10. Some of you got seven and eight year olds in your living room right now. And you know what? They will be the best mouthpieces of the kingdom of God that there ever was. You might be a grandmother who's been without a job, maybe living in retirement and maybe got underlying health issues. But you know what? If, if you've got access to the internet right now, you have, you have the greatest voice that anyone has had in human history. The disciples here, uh, the, the, the loudest they could get was with the reach of their voice. But you could, you could hit every person on your feed and their friends and their friends just by putting something up on Facebook or Instagram. We can do more for the Lord now than we could in any other time, but it's going to take just a moment where we're willing to allow the Spirit of God to do what only He can do in and through us. You can see uh, these two glass jars and these represent two different types of Christians here. One is, uh, one is like that upper room Christian who, uh, when they're available to the Lord, 
uh, they, they want the Lord to do something so profound in their lives that they're willing to to get past themselves to see him do what only he can do. And and, and just to kind of uh, give you a little bit of encouragement there, uh, th- these are not perfect people. These are people who are broken and they're sinful. And, and God is doing miraculous things in their life despite them because they've been willing to trust him by faith and say, I know you're my savior or, or I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it is that you're calling me to do because you gave everything to save me, both in this life and in the next. I'm available, Lord. Just like those, those disciples were when you told them to go and wait in prayer. They went, they sacrificed everything and they just went. And because it was 120, I don't, I don't know why it wasn't the thousands, maybe because there were only a certain amount that were truly devoted to the Lord. But it was those that the Lord appeared to and that were the Holy Spirit was given to first. And they were the first ones to usher in that first movement of the church in such a profound way that it literally changed all of human history. It's the reason why you and I are sitting here right now. I'm standing here because of that. That's the one Christian. And and then the other Christian is this person, they have the Holy Spirit in them too because both of these people have asked Jesus to be their savior. And we know that If you've asked Jesus to be your savior, you are saved. And there's nothing that you can do to be separated from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But for some of us, you might be held back. You might be held back a little bit. And and, and that might be this person. They've got the Holy Spirit in them. And, And the Holy Spirit has the capacity to do infinitely amazing, miraculous things in their life, but because uh, they are holding back God's spirit from actually being able to just be unleashed in them and through them, there's very little evidence that God is at work. And this might be because maybe you got an issue with doubt. Maybe you're doubting the Lord right now, or maybe... Maybe you've had a hang-up, maybe a, a sin issue in your life that, you know, maybe, maybe you've been holding this one compartment of your life back. Like, you're, I'm, I'm going to be obedient in these areas, but this one thing, man, you know, I just, I, this one thing is mine. <laughs> There's one thing, I trust God in all these other areas, but I may not necessarily trust God in this one. And so God is working in your life, but he's unable to work completely in a profound way is where... You know, with this other person, they're willing to shed all of their doubt, they're willing to shed uh, and, and stand against and, and turn away from the issues that have separated them from God and their sin. They're willing to, to cast all of the cares of this world off and with reckless abandon say, Lord, I, I'm willing to go where you want me to go and I'm willing to do what you want me to do. Same Holy Spirit, the difference is your availability for him to do the work that he wants to do. Because look, God is not going to force you to do anything that you don't want to do. And he'll go as far as you're willing for him to take you, but he won't take you any further. You know, as we close this message, I just want to take a minute and say, I feel like God has a decision for all of us to make just in this moment. And the decision is this. I I want you to be so encouraged right now to be a part of the biggest, best, most amazing movement that the world has ever seen. The kingdom come back. In the difference between being a part of it or kind of seeing it from the sidelines is really, it's up to you. It's being willing just in this moment of prayer, this moment of reflection right there in your living room right now and 
and, and taking God at his word and saying, Lord, I, I want to have that experience. I, I want the spirit of God to be able to move in me. I, I want to see you do things that have never been done in history. I want to be a part of that kingdom comeback, Lord. I want to see you move so profoundly in the world in which the, that the disciples would be jealous that we are the ones that are alive in this time in history and, and things are going, they're going to come up and churches are going to begin to open and opportunities are going to get in front of us. But we have one opportunity right now to just surrender all, to stand on that, that promise. We're going to sing this song here in just a second. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Gosh, the, the beauty of that song is the reality that a sinner saved by grace just traded their hopes and desires and expectations of this world and they gave them to the Lord and said, Lord, here I am. Use me. Move in me. God, I want to be unleashed. I want to be one of those Christians that's just set free to see you do something miraculous in my household, in my heart, in my marriage, in my parenting, in my ministry, and in this world. I want to see you move. Pray with me. God, thanks so much for uh, just the opportunity to See what it is that the disciples saw and experience, Lord, what it was that the disciples experienced to know that great promise, Lord, that your spirit resides in us. We are your temple. And God, you want to move in us, God, to speak to us and through us, to reveal to us, God, to... to to even know how to pray and what to do next and what I'm supposed to do with my life and what direction I need to take and who I need to dig into in my relationships and who I need to avoid. God, I, I, want, I want to see you move in a way in which only you can. So I just surrender it all right now. If, God, if you'll have me, I surrender it all. And if that's you, if you're there in your living room, just, just say in the feed right there in your Facebook in, in the open network or on Facebook Live or on, uh, on YouTube Live, say, I surrender so that people can see you, the people that you're sharing that Facebook watch party with. I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering everything. I, I want to be, be in the place where God can speak to me the loudest. And that's both for you but also for the people in your life. What, a, what an amazing gift that we have in the Lord. We love you, God. Thanks so much for this time. In your precious name, amen. Love you guys.
like a witness. You set your treasure in jars of clay. So take this heart, Lord. I'll be your vessel. The world to We thank you so much for this time of worship today, this time of hearing from you. God, I pray that our hearts are changed and moved to not do the things that we once have, but to surrender to you. Jesus, you laid yourself down. God, please use us as your vessel today. 
We surrender to you, Lord. Thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. Hey, make sure and come back next week. It's Revive. It's going to be exceptionally amazing. So we will see you next week.